today we are working on Psalm number 42. Now, Psalm 42 can be used for all kinds of things, but today we are using it to increase our psychic powers, so our psychic abilities. So anybody that's interested in clairvoyance or clairaudience or telepathy, anything that's psychic, this is a great psalm for that. There's all kinds of things you can use this psalm for, but this is just one of the traditional uses that we use it for. So that's what we're going to do today. And the way that we work a psalm spell is very simple in this particular system. We take the psalm in question and we read it out loud all the way through once without stopping that's called an incantation. And then we go back through that very same psalm and we take it slowly, verse by verse, and we consider all of the inner, hidden, occult meanings that we possibly can. And we see these as little packages of seeds, seeds of magic that we can plant and, and and get results from. And it's through this digging and this finding and this contemplating and then applying them to our objective that we, in a very literal sense, take those seeds and plant them into the deep fertile ground of our minds where they take root and they grow and they bear fruit after their kind. And that's what we're going to do right now together with Psalm number 42. As the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my meat day and night, while they continually say unto me, Where is my God? When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in for me. For I had gone with the multitude, I went with them to the house of God, with the voice of joy and praise, with a multitude that kept holy day. Why art thou cast down, O my soul, and why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. O my God, my soul is cast down within me, therefore will I remember thee from the land of Jordan and of the Hermonites from the hill of Mizar. Deep calleth unto deep at the noise of thy water spouts. All thy waves and thy billows are gone over me. Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime, and in the night his song shall be with me, and my prayer unto the God of my life. I will say unto God, my rock, why hast thou forgotten me? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As with a sword in my bones, Mine enemies reproach me, while they say daily unto me, Where is thy God? Why art thou cast down, O my soul, and why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him, who is the health of my countenance and my God. Okay, here we go, working some magic. Remember that we are applying this particular psalm today uh, to the idea of, of getting our, our psychic powers increased. And uh, so you can apply this in other ways in the same way that we're doing it today. So if this isn't why you're coming to the psalm, just apply it toward what you need instead. So as the heart panteth after the water brook, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. Now if you see it like a little animal, you know, running, running off and even your dog, like when they're thirsty, they just run after that water. They run after that water and drink it up. And that's a great image for us. You know, that, 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 that deer or that anything in, in, in nature that instinctually goes after the brook or goes after the water bowl to, to, to get that thirst quenched. We are confessing our desire and need for God. And when we say God, we have to be very, very clear about what we're talking about in these Psalms. We're not talking about a deity here. And that's not to say that you can't work with deities, but here we're not talking about a deity. We're not talking about anything other than the infinite life principle itself. It's the Godhead. There is only one. There is not more than one power. There's one power. There's one presence, one source, one substance. That's what we are desiring, like the heart desires the water. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? 
Okay, so our soul thirsting after the living God, where our soul thirsting after the truth, thirsting after our source, thirsting after that which is beyond the illusions of this world. It says, when shall I come and be appear before God? That's a, that's a question we're asking, but the answer to that question is inherent in the psalm itself. We appear before God when we drink of God, when we thirst for God the same way that an animal in the wilderness thirsts after the water of the river or the brook or the, or the lake. So, that's when God appears before us, when we go after God with that same thirst. My tears have been my meat day and night, while they continually say unto me, where is thy God? So, in this sense, my tears represent my longing for connection to my source. It's not so much my, my sorrow, uh, it's, it's, it's the, the disquietness of understanding that, that when I believe that I'm separate from my source, when I believe that I'm separate from that which creates me, when I believe that I'm separate from all my good, then my tears are, are, are a, a, a response to that. My tears are, are me responding to that idea that I'm separate. And so they are continually saying, where's my God? Where's my God? Where's my God? When I remember these things, I pour out my, my soul in me. For I had go- Okay, so when you remember this, when you sit and think about this, now we're talking about increasing our psychic abilities here. So to, to increase your psychic ability, you have to remember that you're one with infinite intelligence. If you're, if you're thinking that you're separate from infinite intelligence, you have nothing to know. You have no key. You have no connection to, to that which you need to know. So when you remember that and you pour, you pour out your soul in you, that means that you give it your all, that you're completely committed 100% to this power, to connecting with this power, and to all of the rewards, so to speak, that, that are a natural outpouring of being one with this power, being one with your source. One of which is that, that ability to see clearly, to see things clairvoyantly, or hear things clairaudiently, to know things that, that, that are beyond the, the, the physical senses. For I had gone with the multitude, I went with them to the house of God, with the voice of joy and praise, with a multitude that kept holy day. Now, who are the multitude? The multitude here is talking about the totality of your thought forms. It's the, it's the ability, the multitude is the ability to see your, your mind as joined rather than separated, to see everything as one. And when you see things as one, when you experience your mind as one, then psychic ability is a natural outpouring of that. So when you went with the multitude to the house of God, well, what is the house of God? It's not some church in a building. It's not some temple. It's not even some sacred grove in the forest, although that's probably a little closer. The house of God is that part of you which has been sanctified already. It's that part of you which already knows who you are and why you're here, which already knows that you're connected to this source, to this God, which already knows that there is no more tears, there are no more weepings, because you are not feeling that longing for that connection with, with, with your source, because it's already there. And that, that is that place in your consciousness that already exists. And it's with the, the voice of joy and praise with a multitude that kept holy day. So that's a that's a that's a a clue for you at all times. Am I in the house of God in my mind or am I not? Well, if you are, then you feel and hear a joy a, a voice of joy and praise. So joy meaning that that natural feeling of upliftment and happiness and praise, which is that that undying need to enthusiastically claim that good is good, that 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 your source is good. 
keeping a holy day. Keeping a holy day is uh, more, is yes, you can, and, and it's good for your, your psychic development to keep the holy days, meaning to, uh, to understand the full moons and the new moons and, and to mark them and to mark these cross-quarterly uh, uh, Sabbaths and, 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 and things like that. That does recharge your psychic ba- batteries to do that. But more so than just that, keeping the holy day is to recognize that every day is a holy day. Every day is a holy day because every day we are now committing to this power. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Now that's a great thing to ask yourself. Why are you cast down? Why is it that I don't think that I have access to this knowledge? Why is it that I don't feel like I have those abilities that I need to be able to know the truth and see the truth and hear the truth? I want to see the face of God. I want to hear the voice of God. That's what we're saying here. So why is my soul cast down? Why art thou cast down on my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? So that disquieted feeling is always where you're not going to be. Uh, getting the information that you require when you're disquieted within yourself. So you have to learn how to uh, to get to the other side of that. So uh, hope thou in God. It's telling you how to un- how to undo that. To hope thou in God. For I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Now that's a very powerful instruction there. So if you hope in God, now hope doesn't mean, oh, I hope God does this for me. I hope everything works out okay. Oh, I hope so. That's not what we're talking about. Hope in that sense is very destructive because in that sense, hope means I don't think it's going to happen, but I hope so. That's not what hope is. Hope in this sense is closer to faith. It is to put all of your trust in God and all of the things that you hope for, that you desire, that you wish for, put those in God. So if you hope in God, and we've talked about what what God is, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. So what is the help of God's countenance? <laughs> well, what is a countenance? A countenance is a face. And you know somebody by their face, right? When you see someone, you you know it's them because you recognize their face. And that's why it's hard to recognize somebody. That's why like if you have facial recognition on your on your iPhone and you have a mask on, it says, I don't know who you are, so I'm not opening the phone. Use your passcode, please. You know? And and that's why when we are looking for the uh the help of God's countenance, we are looking for help based on understanding who God is. How do you know God's countenance? How do you see the face of God? You see the face of God by reminding yourself of what God's qualities are. We don't say, well, there's God's nose, there's God's cheeks, there's God's lips, there's God's ears. That's not how God operates. We instead say, God is infinite intelligence. God is perfect love. God is is divine law. God is infinite truth. God is life itself. God is spirit and is indestructible. God is unassailable. God extends God's self as me, and that is called a soul. Things like that. That's how we know God's countenance. And so I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. So Thank you, God, for helping me because what the way that you help me is by me remembering your qualities and by me remembering your qualities, I am helped. And in this particular case, I'm helped in, in, in the getting of and the building of the, the ability to have those psychic powers. O oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore will I remember thee from the land of Jordan and from the Hermonites and from the hill of Mizar. Okay, so so when you say my, my soul is cast down within me, then you're just recognizing I don't have what I need. I don't have what I want. In, this, in our case for this particular psalm, my soul being cast down within me means I can't hear your voice. I can't see your face. I don't know these things. I can't see auras. I can't, you know, I can't get messages. I'm not able to telepathically communicate. That is the, the, the soul being cast down within me. So how do I get those, those abilities? It says, therefore will I remember thee. 
I will remember thee from, and it gives us three places to remember God from, the, the land of Jordan and of the Hermonites and from the hill of Mizar. Okay, so Jordan is that, that, that river that flows from north to south. That's where that river exists is in the land of Jordan. The river that flows from north to south. What is that? That is your, that is that the, the, um, that, that spiritual energy moving from your crown chakra down through your third eye, down to your throat chakra, down through your heart chakra, down through your navel center, down through your spleen center, down through into your base chakra. So that's that. That's the that's the the, the land of Jordan. The Hermonites are the the people in your mind that dwell on the highest mountain that you can think of. So they are the most exalted parts of you. So that's the second place they come from. And then from the hill of Mizar, which is the little hill. That little hill, that little hill next to the big hill of Hermon. That little hill represents all of your humility and your meekness and your ability to, to, um, to yield to a higher power. Okay, so, so you have that f- free-flowing energy through your, through your energy centers and then you have exalted thoughts of yourself and you have the meek and humble parts of yourself. So those three things working together, that kicks in your psychic ability into overdrive. Deep calleth unto deep at the noise of my water spouts. All thy waves and thy billows are gone over me. Deep calleth unto deep at the noise of my water of thy water spouts, excuse me. All the all thy waves and thy billows are gone over me. So we want that. So when we are calling on these uh, on this power to wash over us, we are literally asking for waves and water spouts. And if you think about the water spouts as being those chakra centers opening up and going those are God's water spouts in you. That's, that's, that's where that psychic ability comes from. Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime, and in the night his song shall be with me, and my prayer unto the God of my life. So it's telling us how we can always be in that state of, of grace. And in a state of grace, we're always psychically able. We are, we, our psychic abilities are always at their peak. And, and, it's, and it's by accepting God's loving kindness during the day, being protected during the day, reminding ourselves and remembering those qualities of God during the day when we are conscious, and at night knowing that we go into the, our sleep with that protective ability, with that protective power, and we wake with that protective power. So we, 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 we command ourselves as we go to sleep to go to sleep with a thought of a divine thought in our minds, and we wake up immediately with that thought of the divine on our mind, and we keep that going throughout our day. Okay, I will say unto God, my rock, why hast thou forgotten me? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? Okay, so... (laughs) <laughs> God is your rock, meaning that, that you're stable in this, this, this um, that you've got stability in this God. But when you ask God, why have you forgotten me? Why do I go mourning because of the, the oppression of my enemy? We have to understand, first of all, what's the oppression of the enemy? The oppression of the enemy are the thoughts within us that are doubtful, that doubt our abilities, that are constantly looking for proof and trying to provide proof and evidence that we are separate from our good, that we are separate from God, and that we can't have what we want. We can't do the things that we want to do, and we are definitely not psychic. So those are those, that's the, that's the enemy, and that's the oppression of the enemy. And mourning after that, we're, we're saying when, when we are mourning about that, we are experiencing the misunderstanding that God has forgotten us. But God doesn't forget? How could God forget you? Is God like like just kind of an idiot? I mean, God doesn't forget? But we can experience God as having forgotten us when we forget God. If we feel like God is forgetting us, it's because we aren't remembering those qualities of God that we talked about earlier. As with a sword in my bones, 
Mine enemies reproach me while they say daily unto me, where is thy God? Now, do you know what that feels like? Now, now we're talking about psychic ability here, but those of you who have tried and failed at, at precognition or, or seeing auras or those kinds of things, you know what that's like when there's a sword in your bones and your enemies reproach you saying, well, where is this? Where, where is this thing that you, that you talk about? Where is this God? Where are these abilities? Right? So any, and, and you can, you can apply that to anything, not just psychic ability. If you're doing a money spell, just like, okay, well, where's the money? If you're so good, if this, if this stuff really works, where is it? And that's the, the enemy within you that understands that it needs to convince you that this doesn't work because it wants you to be separate. It wants you to feel separate from your good because that's its function is to keep you separate from your good. When in reality, it knows and we now know that it's through our faith that these things come to pass. So you learn how to respond to those thoughts uh, by, by just turning away from them and reminding yourself of those qualities of spirit once again. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? We ask it again. Why? Why? That's a good thing to ask yourself. Are you feeling bad? Well, why? Why, why, are you, why are you doing that? Why are you feeling bad? Why are you feeling like you can't do this or you can't do that or you can't have this or you can't have that? Why are you, why are you giving audience to those thoughts rather than giving audience to the thoughts of the qualities of God, which we discussed earlier, which will lift you out of that? Why would you do that? Um, hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him. Who is the health of my countenance and my God? Okay, so hope in God, we talked about it's, it's, it's it, hoping in God means turning your face to God and remembering who that God is. And praising God means acknowledging enthusiastically that God is good. But remember, God's not a deity. God's not a person. God's not a man. God's not male. God's not female. God is pregender. Okay? And so... It, it, you, what you're praising is the qualities of God. You're praising all good. You're praising all love. You're praising all life. You're praising the fact that you that your heart is beating right now. And what's causing your heart to beat right now is that power. That's what that power is. Who is the health of my countenance and my God? Well, what's the health of your countenance? The health of your countenance, your countenance is how you're recognized by God and by others. And the health of your countenance, if your countenance is not healthy, it means that you are, are um, accepting ideas about yourself which are not true. And then you're portraying the, those untruths to the world. And so then people will start recognizing you as being something other than what you are. But you know, the cool thing is that God only knows your true face. God cannot be fooled. You can't fool God. You can't fake anything with God, thank goodness, because God knows who you are and God knows that you're amazing. God knows that God created you and therefore you're amazing. You are absolutely perfect the way you were created. All this other stuff is stuff that, that is the unhealthy part of your countenance that you've been coming up with over this lifetime. Right, but none of that stuff is true. Anything that's not absolutely true about you doesn't really exist. And the only thing that's true about you is what God created. And God created you perfect, just the way you are. Now, part of that perfection that we can claim, we can claim all different manifestations of that perfection using these kinds of operations that, that, that in this, these Psalms, whether it be money, whether it be love, whether it be protection, whether it be health. But today we're using it to claim that ability to have psychic power, which is your God-given ability. God-given ability. And the little psychic powers that you're after are nothing compared to what you can really do. And that's really good news. And that's how we work these psalms. So you just keep coming back to the same psalm again and again until you start seeing uh, movement in the right direction. And then you just let it go and you, have, and you have the faith that it's happening. Thank you so much for joining me today. I can't wait to work with you again. And until the next time, blessed be.